Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Jason Maloney, and we're going to discuss Baseball Recruiting 101. This is a general overview, understanding that every player's process of recruiting is different and unique, but these are some of the generic steps that most players are going to have to take in order to get recruited and play college baseball. Now, if you're a Power 5 prospect throwing 95 miles an hour, hitting 700 foot tanks, showing up and just playing is going to get you looked at and coaches know who you are based on your previous reputation. But the average kid that's going to play college baseball at the mid-major Division II, NIA, Division III, JUCO route may need to be more of their own advocate. And this is what this presentation is about, teaching you how to advocate for yourself and how to be your best recruiter for your son or daughter and how the players can be the most proactive on their own behalf. So a little bit about me, I've been a high school coach for over 10 years. Uh, I'm a parent who went through the process, a uh, son who played Division I, was an All-American, was drafted, and went through the COVID year of college with the extra roster spots, short and draft, all that other stuff. I've coached and played military baseball over 20 years, and I've assisted dozens of families through the process. I'm a retired Navy senior chief, so um, who used my GI Bill to help augment the cost of college for my kid. So if you have questions about GI Bill, Chapter 33, or any other veterans benefits, um, I can help point you in the right direction. So this is an overview of what we're going to talk about. First, we're going to define a geographic region that you're willing to play. Now, mind you, most of all of these are the prep work that you're going to do before you start playing travel baseball, or showcase baseball in high school to get recruited. Playing baseball is the steps that happen after we do this part, okay? Because the goal is for you to go play in these tournaments over the summer and the fall and have college coaches there to look at your kid. Well, this is how, these are steps to help increase the chances that college coaches can come watch your kid, put your kid's name on a list to come recruit and evaluate. So first, we're going to define a geographic region that you're willing to play. Uh, there's no sense in reaching out to colleges that you're not willing to go to because they're either out of state or on the other side of the country. So we want to define where you want to play and target those schools. Identify programs you can compete at, and I mean compete ac academically and athletically. We're going to teach you how to create a recruiting video with embedded data that helps college coaches on the uh, recruiting scene. Uh, before they come out and see you, we'll see if you meet the metrics that they're looking for in players. We're going to give you a sample email and to fill out recruiting questionnaires for each school that you're interested in and give the school your schedules, whether it's high school, travel ball, showcase ball, what have you. We're going to talk about attending prospect camps at the schools that you're interested in, and prospect camps are most likely the best bang for your buck, in my opinion. We're going to uh, talk about how to pick a travel or showcase team uh, that attends the highly scouted tournaments. And if you're uncommitted after your junior year into your senior year, benefits, pros and cons of PG, PBR showcases. Not necessarily a fan of these because I think you can do a whole lot of, whole lot more for your kid for the price before you have to attend a PG or PBR showcase. We talk about the recruiting calendar, scholarships, and academics for NCAA eligibility. So first, let's talk about geographic location. Every family's different. Every student's different. So what we want to do is get an old-fashioned map out, get a compass, and draw a circle on the distance you're willing to go from home to school. Now find every school that inside that circle that you believe you can compete at athletically and academically, and reach out to those coaches via email, phone calls, social media, et cetera. Um, and here are some links to find D1, D2, D3 schools, NIA schools, JUCO schools, and here's a one-stop shop for finding most colleges. 
Now, once we have identified the schools we want to target for the recruiting process, we're going to get a recruiting video made. Now, getting a recruiting video made with data uh, usually could happen your sophomore year, junior year, uh, preferably just at the beginning of your senior year at the latest. Um, just depends on where you're at. Every kid develops differently. So understanding what your numbers are and what your metrics are uh, and sending out a quality video to colleges. So you want to keep your videos between one and two minutes. We want to use game footage along with a BP session or bullpen session and we'll Im embed the data on the screen so the coaches can see what your what your metrics are and then you want to use twitter uh, to post your video so the way i i like to use uh, the analogy i like to use twitter is like using linkedin we're just going to put our resume out there and see if any recruiters catch it but if we want targeted recruiting we're going to send those recruiting videos to the specific schools that we want to work at or we want to go to school at or we want to play for no different than job search in the adult world okay uh, if you want to work at amazon for example and you never fill out a job application or never send your resume to amazon how does amazon know you want to work for them same thing with playing college baseball if you don't send the recruiting video specifically to the school or reach out to a school directly, how do they know you're interested in their school? Because uh, unlike football or basketball, baseball does not have the recruiting budget that all these other sports have. They're not going to randomly go out and try to find kids that aren't interested in their school. So it starts with that, showing interest. And then you're going to provide your information, your height, weight, GPA, 60 time, SAT, ACT, uh, tag your high school and travel coaches. Um, and your video is your resume. So if the coaches like what they see in the video, they'll put your name on the list and come out and show up and watch you play in some of these tournaments that they're going to be at observing. So that's why it's very important to target schools you're interested in because you don't want a college coach to come up to you say, hey, I saw your video, uh, thanks for the email, we're interested in recruiting you, and you're like, wow, I really don't want to go to your school because you're too far away from home. Then why did you reach out to them initially, okay? So that makes it also harder on your high school and travel ball coaches if you don't have a area that you want to target for schools. So make sure we're communicating your wants, needs, and desires to everybody out there that's trying to help you get to the next level. There is now a more effective and a less expensive way to promote your ability as a baseball or softball player. Welcome to Stat Manager Prospect Videos. Say goodbye to the old way of hoping to be seen at a showcase. Start controlling your own destiny and controlling who sees your skills. When you get a Stat Manager Prospect video, you'll also receive a full data breakdown of your performance, giving you the ability to provide college coaches and scouts exactly what they are looking for. Video to allow them to best evaluate your movements and data to see how your metrics measure up to the standards of their program. Designed with feedback from some of the best college programs and MLB scouts alike, your stat manager video will work for you more than any showcase ever could and at a fraction of the cost. Sign up today for your own Stat Manager video. All right, we're also gonna research the school as part of the prep work. Does the school have your major? Are you trying to be uh, get a degree in aviation engineering or avionics uh, or a specialized degree and the school you're reaching out to doesn't have that degree? Make sure you're doing your research. That's where we talk about, are you a fit academically and athletically? Right? Who have they already recruited? Have they record, recruited seven shortstops and you're the eighth shortstop in the same class? Things to look at. Uh, what does the team look like? Is everybody 6'2", 220 and you're 5'6", 140? Uh, it, looking at the roster sizes could tell you, could give you an insight of what the coaches are looking for. Not all coaches are looking for 6'2", 220 power hitters, okay? There's room on every roster for everybody, but you have to do your homework and target the schools that are 
good fit for you. Academic requirements. Do you meet the academic requirements for the institution you are applying for? And practice your communication skills. Get comfortable talking on the phone and in person. I know a lot of young folks like to text and social media, but their direct verbal communication skills may need some work. So practice your communication skills. Remember, when you're talking to a coach, it is a job interview. All right, some things to watch out for. If a coach comes watch you play, they believe you have the talent to compete or perform athletically at their institution. However, what they're trying to find is do you fit within the culture of their program? They're watching your body language. How do you act when you succeed? More importantly, how do you act when you fail? It's okay to fail. Hall of Fame hitters fail seven out of 10 times and still bat 300. It's okay to fail, but how do you react to failure? Are you a good person? Good team player? Are you confident? Right? Uh, never take BP in the cages in slides, crocs, or sandals. Wear turfs. If you're on the field, wear your spikes. But slides, crocs, sandals, non athletic wear is a no no when you're taking BP. Athletes send emails to coaches. Not your parents. Parents proofread and assist in the emails, but they need to come from the player. And just because one coach is not interested doesn't mean they can't help you. Many times one of their assistant coaches became a head coach somewhere else, and they believe that you may be a fit for them but and refer your name off or give you another contact information to, to another coach to look at. So never burn a bridge and All right, we want to email coaches directly. Send personal emails to the coaches. Don't use a third party. Address the coach by name. Dear Coach Hayes, I'm interested in coming to Jacksonville University and playing in a winning program. Do you want to send five to 10 emails a day to different schools? And don't get upset if they don't respond. Depending on the recruiting calendar and depending on which grade you're in, coach may not be able to contact you. Okay, if it's a school you really want to go to, pick up the phone and call the coach. They can answer the phone, and if they answer the phone, they can talk to you. Here's a sample email. Uh, Dear Coach Hayes, my name is Bob Smith. I'm a 2025 graduate of Regent High School. I'm interested in attending Jackson University. I see you on the ASUN Conference of 2021, and I would love the opportunity to compete at a winning program. What that shows is that you did a little research. You know what conference the school plays in. You know what they did uh, last year, the year before. Your height, your weight, your 60 time, your recruiting video, your GPA, your SAT score, ACT scores, your high school coach, your summer coach, and then your information. All this does is give them an idea, okay, GPA fits, ACT score fits, all right, based on the recruiting video, there's potential there, let's go put our, our eyeballs on this young man. And that's what a recruiting video and email to college coaches are for. It is to make the introduction and set the stage for future interactions. Prospect camps. Again, prospect camps, I believe, are the greatest bang for the buck out there. You get to interact one-on-one -on -one with the coaching staff and the decision makers for the most part. Coaches can talk to you and give you real feedback. Coaches have an opportunity to see how your personality can fit into their clubhouse. Are you uh, a glimpse at your competitive nature? Again, all of this is an interview process. All right, this is something we saw something good at the camps. All right, let's go see him play over the summer and see how he plays against other competition. Okay, prospect camps are very, very good. It shows your interest in a school. It gives you opportunities to be in front of the coaches one-on-one. -on -one. It's not 200 players out there with 30 coaches and Unless you shine or stand out, they may not even know you existed at that camp. 
But if you go to a prospect camp on the campus, it may only be 30 kids out there. And with four or five coaches, 30 kids, you're going to have an opportunity to be seen. Again, college camps, prospect camps on campus are the best bang for your buck, in my opinion. How do you find prospect camps? Well, go to the athletic department website for the different schools. Here's an example for JU Dolphins. Um, you have baseball prospect, college baseball prospects, baseball recruit camps, baseball camps USA, and when in doubt, a Google search. But find a prospect camps on the colleges that you're really interested in. You could most likely attend four or five college camps for the cost of one PG showcase and you probably get more bang for the buck. College recruiting calendar. Understand the college recruiting calendar. Here's a link to it. Understand when coaches are allowed to recruit, when they're allowed to talk to you, when they're not allowed to talk to you. Um, a lot of recruits get upset when college coaches don't talk to them at tournaments. Many times, most times, if not all the time, College coaches cannot interact with players or parents at these tournaments that they're scouting. So they're not being rude. They're not trying to be rude. They're, they're just doing their job and just trying to stay out of trouble with the NCAA. They cannot talk to you at these tournaments. Even though they scouted you, walk by you, you say, hi, Coach Smith, and he kind of ignores you or just gives you a little wink and just keeps walking. He's not being rude. He's just following the rules of the NCAA. All right, so in the recruiting calendar, you'll see uh, different periods. You'll see dead period, quiet period, and here's a, the definitions for those. You don't need me to read them to you. You'll see an evaluation period and contact period. Evaluation period is usually is the times they're off campus, but they can't talk to you off campus, right? Scholarships. Let's talk about the amount of scholarships. Division one, there's 11.7 scholarships. Minimum required for baseball scholarships, 25%, with a maximum number of 27 scholarships allowed per team. Teams in division may carry up to 35 players on the roster. So there's a lot of players to split a small amount of scholarships. Division two has nine, division three has zero, but they have academic scholarships, no athletic scholarships, NIA has 12, and JUCO has 24, assuming the program is fully funded. Here's a scholarship breakdown. For example, there's 298 division one teams, I think it's up to 301 now. Uh, total athletes about 10,400, average size 35 with 11.7 scholarships per team. Okay, so there's a, a large number of student athletes, but not a large number of scholarships available. Academics, everybody that wants to play NCAA sports needs an NCAA eligibility number. There's the website to get your NCAA eligibility number. Some highlights, the Division One academically eligible. Complete 16 core courses, four years of English, three years of math, algebra one or higher, two years of natural physical science, one additional year of English, math, or natural physical science, two years of social science. Okay, earn at least 2.3 GPA in your core courses. And then there's the minimum SAT, ACT score. It could be super scored, some scored, um, and that changes. So make sure you get the updated information. Now, if you are an online student, go to a virtual school, please make sure your school is NCAA eligible. Not all high schools are NCAA approved. 99.9% .9 of public high schools are NCAA approved. It's the private schools that may or may not have requested NCAA eligibility, new schools, et cetera. So just double check if to make sure your school is NCAA approved. Data. Some people love it, some people hate it, but data is here in baseball and data is here to stay for the foreseeable future, whether we like it or not. And every coach uses 
data differently. Okay, know your numbers. Um, Division one pitchers, 84 to 95. Most are 90 to 95. Okay, yes, there are outliers. There are kids pitching in Division one baseball throwing 82 miles an hour. Yes, that is a fact. Okay. These are just generic numbers. By no means does it mean if your kid throws 95 miles an hour, he can play Division One. There also has to be the ability to throw strikes and compete and play. So there's a whole lot that goes into it more than just numbers. Okay. Just because your kid hits a certain number doesn't mean he can still compete at that level because every coach is different. Every coach has a different vision of what their ball club is going to look like. But have an idea of where you sit. Hitting data, 90 mile an hour exit below is the average. 100 miles an hour is the elite exit below. Sub 60 times or sub 7, 60 times are the norm in most places. Not everywhere, but most. Okay. So understand where you're at, where you need to be, where you need to get to. Conclusion. Academics matter. No one cares more than you. Or no one cares more about you than you. Just if you're waiting on a third party to do the recruiting for you, you're going to get left behind. You have to care more than anybody else about your recruiting or about you being recruited or about your son or daughter being recruited. No matter how much we pay somebody else to do it for us, nobody will do it better than us. And the goal of this presentation is just to give you some knowledge, pass on some information, some lessons learned that I went through as a parent, as a coach, uh, and just be passing information down to somebody else. Start attending summer camps early, summer before freshman year, after your eighth grade year, ninth grade year. Go to summer camps, college camps. Uh, they have them in the summer and in the fall. Know your data and know your checkpoints. Try to get your numbers every 90 to 180 days. Get your numbers. See if you're going up. See if you're going down. See if you're staying stagnant. Okay? Understand the data and the numbers that you're doing. And do your research on schools. Do the research on schools. Does it, is it a fit for you academically? Is it a fit for you athletically? Is it a fit for you emotionally? Uh, you want to find the right fit. And last off, if you want a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me, by all means, reach out via email. And I'd be more than happy to set up a phone conversation, a Zoom conversation, uh, what have you. Uh, if you need a recruiting video, I can uh, take care of that as well. So with that, um, thank you for watching. And we'll look forward to seeing your son or daughter playing college baseball. Have a great day.